This is a Galleon 650 Skydeck, and it's got one of the most intriguing flybridges I've ever seen. So we're going to give you the full tour. Now, Galleons are always full of innovation, so we're going to head inside first of all, give you the full tour of the interior, and then we will go and look at that flybridge, because it really is quite special. We're at the Cannes Boat Show. There's an awful lot of people here, so we do the very best we can in the circumstances we've got, but I think we should have a fairly clear run. We're going to start with this cockpit area. You can see that they brought the seating all the way around, not just across the back, but up the sides as well. Big table, wonderful place to sit out and enjoy a meal under this overhang. We've got the uh, door lifted up on the transom. That's access to the crew cabin. I'll show you that. Obviously, that normally would be back and flat, so it's the same all the way around. Anyway, let's head on through. We've got uh, ice maker here, a little bit of storage. Sink underneath that one. Barbecue under there. And if we head on inside, one of the things you find is just how open this is because there's a massive drop window here. <laughs> it's not a drop window. There's a massive window that lifts up here. And then you've got the door that slides away here. So with those both open, it really connects these areas. It's a galley aft layout, as you can see. Now, this is very much a galleon feature. I'll show you around the decks in a minute, but just to give you an idea, we've got the drop balconies on either side. The bar stools go in. These hinge open, door slide back, and then you really bring in these lovely bar areas in, linking them again with the interior. Same on this side. You've got the bar here, and again, that piece flips up. They slide shut, and that's how you enclose it. But a lovely social spot. There's a fridge here, there's a lot of fridges on this boat. In fact, I think I was told five. So there's one there, that I think is a freezer. But then we come around here and there's an extra one that's been put in here. And on the end of this one, we've got a dishwasher tucked into there, that's rather neat. Load of storage all the way around here. Sink, cooking facilities, and so on. We've also got storage up around the top. So all around here, we've got one open at the minute. They all open thusly. So that is the galley area. I'm always careful these because I miss things on galleons because there's just so much to show you. And in fact, I have missed something already. There's a TV. This rises out of here. It means you can sit there and watch the Grand Prix on a Sunday out in the cockpit if you want to. Fabulous. Let's head forward a little bit further. We've got bar area in here. And that is a 55-inch television. It rises up, and of course you've got this brilliant area here. This table's on telescopic legs. You can drop that down, and that then, you, uh, infill cushions go on it, it makes a wonderful day bed. You can lie there, watch a movie, absolutely fabulous. We'll press on forward a little bit further. Again, the helm is over here. There's a side door on this one, so you've got direct access from here straight out onto the deck. Brilliant for owner operation. And then across here, you've got the multifunction displays. We've got this one on some of the systems for the boat here. We've got a chart plotter, we've got cameras, as you can see, dotted around the place. It's got Zentia control. That links the bow thrusters and the throttles to give you joystick control. There's a yacht controller as well, so you can walk around the boat and control everything remotely when you're docking the boat. Proportional bow and stern thrusters, and then all the wipers and pumps and all that kind of thing. Oops, <laughs> pressed the button, uh, are on there. And then the MAN instrumentation is across the top. More fridges, there's one up here, because what this is, that's not it, but that one is. So what you've got here, basically, is a walkway through straight out onto the foredeck. I'm going to show you that in a minute. We'll stick with the interior for now, but that's rather impressive. And then you've got another sink and drain edges there. If we head forward, now all of these boats have this layout forward, but there are alternative layouts further aft, which I'll show you. This just brings you down to a single cabin up here in the bow, lovely private spot. You've got a linen cupboard, or a cupboard for whatever you want to use it for, up here. Again, just a ton of storage everywhere, really. And then we go around again into here. Forward cabin, that's very much a galleon thing. They put a lot of light into the cabins. You can see all the way along here. And those little squares, you might be able to see them. Yeah, you can see them there. That's non-slip, because obviously glass can be quite slippery. You can close that off, because there are blinds. Put across like this. Big windows as well. And these little square fellows are opening sections. And you can see blinds that drop down over those as well. Again, ton of storage everywhere. 
not going to open it all but just so you get the idea storage there there's drawers underneath the bed it's fantastic like so loads more storage down here more storage up here and um huge hanging locker just there if we spin on around there's an ensuite to this cabin there's also an infinity mirror here and the tv is here as well of course a little dressing table and then this has its own ensuite in here with a separate shower now depending on the layout you choose this may or may not be the owner's cabin because if you opt for the four cabin layout this is your owner's cabin this particular boat has got a three cabin layout and the owner's cabin is back after it's even bigger than this so i'll show you that we'll head on back and i'll explain the other layout as well get more storage okay we'll come all the way back And then what we'll find back here, I should mention that all this wood is all owner specification, so you can choose all sorts of different options. I think it's about 10 different options of wood on these. Another stairway. I was chatting with the owner of this one earlier, and she was telling me that this is a great spot where these stairs are. The kids apparently love to sit on here and look out these windows. When you're traveling at speed, the wash is just powering past. It's a brilliant, brilliant place to sit, apparently. If we drop right on down, what we'll find is the day heads is down here. So that's there, and there's a shower. But that's also an ensuite. So you can see there's a doorway there. That is ensuite to this cabin. So two single beds. You can infill that to make a double if you wish. You can see the stairs there going down to that cabin we were just in up at the front. Again, nice little dressing table just there. Again, loads of storage. TV in here, big windows, more storage along here. We could spend a long time opening and shutting things on here. And that is that door into that day head. So at night, you can be straight into there. And then what we have is the owner's cabin back here, full beam of the boat. Now, the alternative to this is, if I remember this correctly, you can have this so that it has its en suite down in that section and then that section there is used to make another cabin and the passageway extends down here if you look at the website <laughs> it'll be a lot clearer than I'm explaining it but the idea is you have basically instead of one cabin there you have two and you lose a bit in here as a result but if you opt for this one which is the three cabin layout so two down here and the one we saw up in the bow this is massive absolutely massive again absolute ton of storage all the way around here around over here so if we look over here for example all nicely done big windows blinds that drop down over them a nice little breakfast nook and again your AV equipment and so on but yeah that's a really really big cabin isn't it just fantastic and of course ensuite as you'd expect love these tiles in here these are great and you've got this sort of mosaic finish in here as well which is rather special that's a, a rainfall shower and then you've got the wand as well and then the loo is there and there is a sink and behind here. That's a nice cabin. Drawers under the bed as well. <laughs> it's just everywhere. And if you wonder about these little silver discs on the floor, what these are are access traps to get to engineering areas. That's to the top of a tank, for example. You'll see them dotted around the boat. There's another one there. If we move that little stool out of the way, that's to the top of that tank, all the fixings. So if you ever had any issues, stuff's easy to get to okay that is the lower deck at both ends and the main deck inside we should go and take a wander around the outside i particularly want to show you this flybridge that i mentioned we also want to look at the crew cabin we also want to look at the engines so we'll come right out forward now you can see there's an opening section here this basically if I remember rightly powers up and into the roof yeah it's there but it just gives tremendous flow right down through the boat. Normally to get up onto the bow, you've got to go back out the doors, round the side, up the side decks, and then you appear out here. This one, you just stroll through, it's fantastic. A lot of configuration here. This door here just comes across to here so that when this drops down, it meets it and seals that off. What you can do with these is you can have a table up, as we've got here, table down, make a sunbed. 
you can also move these ones here you can bring them in as this one's got for sitting right around or you can push them out electrically they go right out to the bulwarks so instead of being a walk down the outside you walk through this way it makes this a lot wider so you can completely configure this area so however you're using it whether it's for seating sun lounging or whatever a big chunk of boat isn't it now we're going to go and look at the flybridge and you can see how the flybridge is pretty much invisible from here and if you look at that flybridge there you can see the difference compared to this one that's what makes this a sport fly rather than the full flybridge obviously they do full flybridge versions but if you have the sport fly you have this and it's intriguing so we'll come back through here and just for fun we'll walk around and head down the side deck just so we can see everything there we go i want to show you these balconies as well because these hinge you can just see there so that lifts up obviously you take the rails out and it lifts up flush against the side very much a galleon thing you can see it on the boat next door as well this is the bar area that we saw from inside I'm starting to lose my voice now i've been here for a couple of days talking non-stop if you come right on round, we've also got things like the uh, joystick control here for the engines and thrusters so that is for when you are stern to berthing you can stand here and control the boat in okay come and check this out so steps up as per normal and here is a very discreet low-level flybridge now sports bridge boats are becoming ever more popular we've seen them from people like princess and fairliner just brought out their phantom 65 which is a similar sized boat to this what's really intriguing about this one so the idea of these is you retain the sports style so it's a lot sleeker looking boat but you still have a small area up here on top that you can use helm position is here got the twin screens joystick control engine controls all that kind of stuff that's all great however these seats do this and you might think well, what's the point of that and the point of that is this is a carbon fiber panel it goes right up to there and it powers back across back here these also drop down another carbon fiber panel there and that powers across this way you have to drop the table of course that's on a telescopic leg they meet in the middle and this disappears it becomes a flat roof again speaking with the owner she keeps keeps or kept this boat i think she's actually getting a larger galleon now she kept this boat in sweden she said it just rains all the time you know, every 10 minutes seems to rain and then this all gets all messy and dirty and needs cleaning not on this one because all they do is they just drop these flat and power it shut and forget about it that's absolutely brilliant not seen that before i know that galleon are always full of innovation but that's a new one on me okay last thing to talk about crew cabin and engines so we're going to come right on back We'll take a stroll down to the bathing platform. So we've got a high-low platform here. Let's take about a, a Williams 345, something like that. You could take a wider one if you wanted to, but the Williams 345, I'm told, fits well because it's not right up against here. It's sort of got a gap that you can walk through. This is this door that we can see open. So if we drop that down, you can see how that then connects the seating up above. But we want it up because we're going in there so if we come around here the first thing we discover is the crew cabin so laundry facilities are in here this is really an owner operator's size of boat it's more of an overflow cabin really but nonetheless it's a useful area we've got the microwave we've got twin beds in here There's a bit of junk in here at the minute as you can see because we're at a boat show these are poles for a bimini over the foredeck because the boats in sweden they've never been used but nonetheless it has them toilet in there and a shower as well and then you've got a fridge down here a washing machine i think we mentioned and a load more storage over on this side it is quite a decent little area you've got good headroom in here plenty of lights from these windows all very splendid but the other thing that we have is if we wander around here it'll take us around there's a big watertight door here that of course comes shut and then you've got these sort of things that lock it shut and then here is the engine room now these are a pair of man 1200 horsepower engines and the thing with these sport bridge boats is supposed to be all about performance and um yeah i think it's fair to say it's true on this one because this boat will do 35 knots in fact the lady who owns it reckons she'd had a knot or two more than that out of this one but 35 is what they reckon normally that's what you should rely on and that makes this a very fast 65 foot flybridge boat 
cruising speed therefore, 25 is typical, and the range is the usual sort of 250 miles that you get out of this kind of boat at planing speeds. As I always say, if you drop the speeds right back, you can go an awful lot further. Typically, at displacement speeds, which would be probably about seven or eight knots, you'd normally look to triple that range. But at high speed, that's what you can expect. Look at these, these are beasts, aren't they? These big turbochargers here are like dinner plates. Generator lives down here. Fuel tanks, obviously, filtration systems, fans, all that kind of stuff. Now they do an alternative version of this that has a tender garage. This boat doesn't have it, it has the crew cabin, but that's why it's got this shape here. What you've got instead is a locker in the, uh, in the cockpit. You open that and that's a massive well, but it just means that that's what that is for. If, as I say, you don't have the crew cabin and you have an alternative cockpit arrangement, then that goes right back, door at the back, tender storage. Again, it's all about customization. It's all about how you use your boat. And there's a lot of different options with these. And I think we have fairly comprehensively covered it. But what do you think about that flybridge? I think that's really, really neat. And it's a new one on me. OK, that is about the size of that. I am going to stand over here. And I'm going to say massive thanks to Approved Boats. They've organised this tour for me. Huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. Hopefully, I'll retain my voice just long enough to get you a few more here from Cam Boat Show. And we'll catch you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.